I got a problem. I've been working tirelessly on this BMW E46 for the last couple months. I bought it for 500 bucks and I'm trying to fix everything I can on it mechanically so I can flip it. But I can't flip it if it has an issue. Then I get hit with another check engine light. Not just any check engine light, a P0741 for a transmission torque converter. So join me as we figure out how to get this transmission removed on the floor of my garage, replace the torque converter so we can get this check engine light fixed, take care of some maintenance items while we're down in there, and get this car ready and driving like new for the next owner that wants to come along and buy it. So we are back on the 2001 E46 330i automatic transmission. Let's get this stuff unboxed. We got our low lift transmission jack, four new jack stands, used torque converter, box full of parts from FCP Euro, fluid pump, and our new scan tool from Foxwell in addition to our creeper. So without further ado, let's get after it. That's pretty dang tall. We should be able to get plenty of height, I think, with uh, these jack stands. Let me give them a quick measure. Yep, about uh, 24 and a half inches on there. Higher than advertised. to get this unboxed real quick so I can show you guys some details on the codes. Again, this is the Foxwell NT624 Elite. It was originally shipped to me for my diesel truck. It's more compatible with US models. However, it does have a couple features it can do on the Germans, but it definitely reads codes just like any other code reader. So let's get this thing plugged in real quick. I'll show you what code we're looking at. So let's get in here. Let's get into OBD2, automatic transmission. We'll go into there. The dynamic treble codes. So we have a P0741 that is current. That's for torque converter clutch circuit performance slash stuck off. So this code comes up when that torque converter fails internally. As I'm keeping on the gas, I'll feel the RPM slip up two to 300 RPM. And then the check engine light will come on after it happens a couple times. So that's when I'm putting that transmission under load. That fluid bypasses that internal seal and then causes the check engine light. So I'm just gonna pre-soak these with some tri-flow. And then also the vacuum line up here as well. Before we pull this, let's get that transmission jack out. And we're going to use the transmission jack to lower this exhaust. Check this thing out. We got a bag of wheels. It only cost me about 120 bucks, so definitely worth the price as far as uh, making sure this job goes smooth. This thing's pretty cool. It's basically just a glorified scissor jack on wheels, right? And then you can throw in a half inch chuck and you just use a half inch ratchet to raise and lower this bad boy. Pretty cool design. This Guibo is still good. I think I might reuse it. They have it installed backwards though.
You gotta peel that butyl tape off because they sort of glue up into place. That indent right there. There we go. And she's out. So this is definitely evident that the drive shaft was done. Usually the butyl tape is a lot cleaner. Um, we're gonna check it for play and inspect it for any cracks or tears. And we'll compare it to a new fresh bearing, but I think we should be able to get away without replacing it. So after inspecting this flex disc, it's apparent that this thing is like brand new and it was definitely replaced in the past. There's no cracks, there's no signs of wear, um, but it was installed incorrectly. Anytime you install one of these, just make sure that the arrow is facing the bracket that's lined up with it and you'll make sure that you have it installed correctly. But this one is installed backwards. Center support bearing, I haven't been able to see any signs of wear or cracking in it as well. It looks like it's been refreshed and based off this butyl tape job, it doesn't look like a factory butyl tape job. So I get this fill plug out of here and we got to get the drain plug out. Pretty clean release. Got the goods. What do you think? Being a good road dog. There's today's spread. I got a little headache coming on, so we're gonna take a little lunch break. Hopefully it goes away and we'll get back after it. Catching up on some no-nonsense know-how while I'm finishing up lunch. Our favorite channel around here. Come on, lazy puppy. Time to get back to work. Let's go. So here's our hardware section so far. Just found that other piece of jaw puller that almost hit me in the eye during that torsion bar cross member job. We need to get into this FCP box now because I need to get a fresh drain plug to seal this transmission up. So we got our Transmission pan gasket. Now this looks like a uh, flex disc. Got a bunch of ZF trans fluid. Got two transmission mounts. Transmission pan gasket. Two transmission mount nuts. This looks like our drain plug. This looks like our fill plug. Two more transmission mounts, nuts. And then this should be center support bearing. And that's it. And while we're here unboxing, let's take a look at this torque converter. Now this was a used unit. I got off eBay. Got this thing for 150 bucks. It was 110 and then an extra 40 for shipping. I'm glad they covered the port. Wonder if it's got fluid in it still. Right on. Alright, looks fairly clean. I'm gonna wait to reseal it because I don't really want to do it right now. Oh, that just clocked me in the head. We got pretty good access to the trans mounts now. You can see they're definitely worn, um, so I'm excited to get those renewed. That's gonna be a big difference. The transmission is drained. I have the front reinforcement plate off, so now I get to do the fun part of uh, breaking all these bell housing bolts loose. And then once I need to get the tops done, I'll pull that transmission mount and drop the trans down a bit so I can get a better angle up through the trans tunnel. And another thing we need to consider too is we're going to have to get into the inspection port up here and start taking out the torque converter bolts that mount the flex plate to the torque converter. And then we're gonna have to get the starter pulled on the top left. All right, shifter linkage is disconnected. Now all we really have is the trans lines and then this harness that runs back up here has two clips that it clips into on the top of the trans. And so we'll get to those once we get this trans dropped down a little bit. Now we need to get in the front and we need to get the fan shroud removed and the cooling fan so I can get to the crank pulley. Let's get these push pins out. And get this puppy removed. Clutch off. Get 
this out of there. So I got a 22 mil socket on the crank pulley now on a half inch ratchet. And now we need to get access to the torque converter port, which is right up here on the exhaust side. So we'll get that cover out, rotate the engine till we see all the torque converter bolts and we'll rip all those out. There we go. And we can already see one of the bolts. free and clear and this is CAD or cardboard aided design and I'm uh, just going to put holes in it that way I can put all my bell housing bolts in their respective spot and I'll mix them up for the reinstallation. So now we're at the point to where I'm going to move to the back, pull the transmission mounts and bracket, and then I'm going to start dropping this trans down. It's going to pivot off of the front engine mounts, and I'll be able to get more access through the top so I can start hitting the rest of the bell, bell housing bolts. Trans down. One thing that always happens is that starter gets stuck in the transmission and it has a pin that locks into the trans. So take your trans extension, put a, a hex socket on it, line it up to that pin, hit it with the hammer and knock the pin out of the bell housing. Hey, nice. All right, you guys, we got this thing out of there. I needed uh, 22 inches of ground clearance from the ground up to the lift pad in order to get the transmission rolled out underneath the front subframe. Phantom Zor, I know you were asking about that. So that's our ideal number in order to clear the transmission from the subframe. However, this trans jack is about seven inches tall. So 22 inches of ground clearance minus seven inches from the trans jack. We're left with about 15 inches. Call it 16 to play it safe. You'll need about 16 inches to slide the trans out from underneath. See how, oh, she wants to come out easy. Cool. She's not gonna fight me. I'm gonna call it a day. I'm pretty tuckered. I'm gonna go hit the hot tub, get Sage inside, and uh, get showered up. But all in all, successful first day. Uh, it's about 6 p.m. right now. I started on this job around noon with a lunch break, so we'll call it five hours to get the transmission pulled. Day two, folks, we are back. Got relatively cleaned up after yesterday. Today, we're probably gonna kick things off by getting this new torque converter flushed out a little bit. Then we're going to get her pre-filled, get her installed back onto the transmission, do some stuff in the engine bay, getting it tidied up while we still have all the room with the trans out, and then continue getting this transmission reinstalled back in the car.
Now, before I get too carried away, there is a vacuum line up here off the back of the vacuum canister that is pretty collapsed. So I'm going to work on getting that replaced. Runs up to uh, the firewall area. So I got this vacuum hose removed that goes from the vacuum canister to this nipple up in the firewall. But the hose on the back side of this nipple is torn as well, so that's going to cause a vacuum leak. So I was getting access to it and I pulled out this uh, piece here that blocks the brake booster. And I went to go lift up and disconnect the brake booster hose over here and this piece just popped right out. So we got to do that intake hose too. So here there was enough good vacuum line to uh, cut it back to some good fresh hose. Got the nipple back installed and got a new vacuum line. We use torque converter. Oh my god, that fluid looks terrible. Oh, that looks so bad. We don't need to fill it up all the way to the flange, but we want to put some fluid in it and want to sort of rock it side to side and spin it. That way we can just start working some air bubbles out. There it goes. That's all the way in. So it dropped in on that first set of spline, dropped in on the second, and then that last one was a real audible click. We're day three on this transmission job. I ended up taking yesterday off for a bit. I grabbed a hot pan right after I had taken it out of the oven and cooked my three fingers. So I kind of gave yesterday a day to heal up, visit with a friend going through a lot of changes here at home, but we're back at it. I got into the engine bay this morning and got some repairs taken care of. Let me show you. This hose has two rubber check valves in it, right? So it allows vacuum to be pulled into the brake booster, but it doesn't allow that vacuum to be released back down into the engine when you shut the engine off. That way you can still have some vacuum left in the brake booster. Well, I got her super glued back on and uh, I got the hose reinstalled back on there. I, I broke that factory clamp loose so I could get some more room and then got the valve reseated, ran a bead of uh, super glue down on there. And so what you can do to make sure you have a good tight fit is there's those two check valves in there, right? So if I suck on it, it's completely sealed. But if I blow on it, those valves open up and allow that vacuum to be pulled on the brake booster. So I know this is nice and tight. I got nothing coming backwards, so I'm good on that. And then I just need to smoke test the intake when I'm done. Other than that, everything's looking good down here. What's up, Sage? Uh, the rear main is nice and dry. I have uh, that vacuum hose that was uh, repaired up there to the vacuum canister. So anything that I need to address while I have the transmission out is already addressed, which is good. One more thing I did here, too, is... Uh, the starter mounts in this hole and this hole right here, and then there's a dowel on the starter that runs into the transmission bell housing. That dowel gets stuck all the time, and I was fighting getting this transmission out because that pin on the starter was stuck in here. So like I showed you guys on the video, I like to take my trans extension and put a hex socket on there, an uh, like Allen socket, and then I smash that Allen socket from this end, and I get that dowel to knock loose. But prior to installing, I just like to take a rat tail file like this, and then just run it and sort of open up that slot for the dowel a little bit. That way it just falls in a lot easier when I do go back in for the reinstall. So, All right, pop out these trans hose O-rings. And there's these silver type O-rings. I don't know if they're special, but I definitely want to order genuine O-rings before I get this trans back in. I also threw some quick plugs in there just to keep some dirt and debris out.
It barely scrapes the oil pan, but she fits. Before I start putting this trans up, I think I'm going to put my engine support bar up on the front end because after I removed this transmission, that engine tilted forward, right? And so now that bell housing is sitting, or the back of the block and the starter and everything sitting a bit high. So I'm going to put that engine support bar on the front of the end and lift up off that front tow hook and that's going to tilt that engine down and tilt the flywheel down towards me and give me a better um, installation angle when I get this trans back up. Okay, that looks better. We'll make sure that our routing for our wires is out of the way, and I'm going to start putting this thing up. I'm going to call Harbor Freight and get a warranty on this trans jack because this right side is going up far faster than this left, and this transmission's tilting. And I just don't feel that safe. All right, folks. So this scissor jack is not working properly. This uh, one side is creeping up a lot higher than the other. And I just don't feel comfortable, nor do I think I'm going to be able to get the right angle. So I'm going to get this thing warrantied. What I need to do now is find something to where I can slide this trans off. I'm probably going to stack some four by fours, slide the trans off, leave it on there. And then I'll slide it back onto the new one when I get back from the store. Swap only took about 10 minutes. This is not fun. This thing's kicking my ass, folks. All right, guys, so I got most of the bell housing made it up. As you can see here, I still got a couple more bolts to run in all the way. Um, a big helpful tip is you can see I have really good access to the starter. I took this vacuum canister out. It sits like that, 13 millimeter nut on the bottom, one hose off the back, one hose off the front. If you're going to get access to the starter on these M54s, you really got to get that vacuum canister out of the way. Right now I'm fighting getting that those starter bolts lined up. It's just a real tough design when you're doing a transmission. But pull that vacuum canister out and then you can get your hand physically up there to the starter and it's going to be, give you a lot more help. I just got to get that um, dowel on top of the starter lined up right and then I can run the rest of those starter bolts in. Well folks, trans is up and mated. I got everything flush, torqued. Go back up to this inspection port, and I got to get that torque converter lined up with those flywheel, and then I got to put those three torque converter bolts in, so that's what we'll be doing next. It's real hard to get you guys a view, so I'm going to do the best I can here. Take a chunk of butyl tape, like for window uh, vapor barriers, and just shove that in the corner of the socket, like that. Then stick this bad boy in. Now it doesn't want to come out. All right, it kicked my ass, but we got the bell housing bolts tight. We got the torque converter bolts tight. I got those Loctited. I'm going to get this uh, vacuum canister back up in here and then probably call it a day for today. I'm tuckered out. Got to wait for a couple more parts to come in.
I appreciate you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. It's another day over here in the shop, so welcome back. Today I'm feeling a little bit better, got a little bit more energy. Loosen one bolt like that and see how it just likes to dump out the back end. And so just slightly crack the pan loose and then just let it drain out the backside like that. And you got to really hold these flat because they will spill. So here's a look at our trans pan. And yeah, like I said, the fluid color is really nice. There's hardly anything on these magnets. I'll give them a wipe down. I'm actually going to pressure wash this uh, trans pan, at least the exterior. But the magnets are nice and clean. The fluid looks good. So overall, I'm pretty happy with uh, the signs that we're seeing inside this thing. You can see how raised this drain plug lip is. So you really don't get all the fluid out when you do crack that drain plug loose. There's still quite a bit that sits inside that pan. Here's all your magnets. You just pop them off and give them a wipe down. Clean. So here's a great teachable moment. We took that trans filter out, and if you look up here, we got that trans filter seal that was still up in that port. So always, always double check, make sure those seals come out with the filter, because I would have inhibited uh, getting the new filter in. Start cleaning up this surface. Just give it a quick wipe. It's a genuine BMW transmission filter and I just lubed the gasket up with Sil Glide and then wet silicone spray but any lube will suffice I think. So my favorite sealant is this uh, Curel T by L-Ring and I use it on everything valve cover gaskets, oil pans, I like to use it on trans pans too. So I'm just gonna run a small bead. And I just take my finger and just smear it on. All right, trans pan gasket and trans pan is good to go. You just want to go equal and opposite. I like to start in the center and just do a Z pattern, star pattern, and work my way out. Okay, it's all torqued up. So she's ready for fluid once we get these transmission line O-rings back in stock. So I'm waiting on the parts store to get me those. I'm going to work on buttoning up these harnesses a little bit, getting this main trans harness tucked back into those wire clips up top, getting the shifter cable connected back up as long as it's not going to get in the way of the O-rings, and then uh, 
Now we'll go play around with the drive shaft a little bit. This goes in, quarter turns and clips, comes over, fits on top. I suggest disconnecting it at this nut up top as opposed to this nut down here. There's some very minute adjustments that need to be made in here, or this is just a very finicky component right here. If you have this shift cable off, it can throw off how your transmission shifts from down here up to the shifter. If you disconnected it, this nylock nut up top, you won't have to uh, worry about getting anything back into adjustment after reinstallation. The shift linkage is all connected up. The rear harness is connected and tucked up into its clips. The front harness is good to go. Just need to wait for these two transmission O-rings. I can get those trans lines back in and then we can do the initial fill on this. For now, we'll go work on the drive shaft. When someone replaced this, they actually installed it backwards. This arrow should be facing this flange and this arrow should be facing the other way. Reason for that is you want the, you want the force transferred between the transmission and the drive shaft to be transferred in this fat portion of, this, of the flex disc. You don't want it to be transferred through this skinny portion right here. It'll cause premature wear. So I'm gonna bust this loose and get it flipped. And you know, the center support bearing feels really good too, but I'm gonna end up replacing this as well. Just cause I gave it a spin, feels a little bit lopsided. I haven't done one in a long time. So we'll break this loose and we'll end up doing the uh, center support bearing as well. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. Old center support bearing is off. All right, folks, so we made some good progress today. We got that trans pan resealed, new filter is up and in. We got all the cable linkage for the shifter and the transmission harness is reconnected. We fixed that guibo and got it flipped around. We also replaced the center support bearing. There's really not much I can do until I get those transmission O-rings tomorrow. So probably gonna call it a day here, go take care of some business emails, talk with some brands for the future. I'm excited to share with you guys. There was no way he knew I was going to him. She also knew where we were at, <laughs> at all times. Mm. So that beautiful sunrise. I still hate getting up early. Day four, everybody. I think. I think it's day four. We got the Transline O-rings. And I got some more stuff from FCP Euro. I got some extra fluid I probably won't end up using, but I am going to attempt to flush the lines. And then I also got this tensioner. That uh, mechanical tensioner for the alternator, water pump, power steering, you know the bearing wasn't making noise, but the actual tensioner assembly I believe is where my rattle was coming from, that belt noise. So I got a hydraulic tensioner updated replacement from Ina. So we'll get this tensioner kit in in the front end when we're getting things buttoned up. Comes with all this new hardware. What a beautiful kit. Uh, so I just took a piece of bulk hose. I don't even know what size this is. Uh, maybe like three eighths or something. Anyways, I got it fitted onto one of these trans lines and then I, I trimmed up this, this fluid pump so I could get it to fit snugly inside of there. And I'm just gonna attempt to flush out these trans cooler lines. I wanted to test this out and see if I could get some old fluid to push out just like that. So I'm just gonna push some fresh fluid through here and uh, try to get this old fluid out. Which is funny, it looks like a red ATF, but these ZF transmissions take ZF fluid. So that's sort of interesting, but we're definitely getting some old fluid out of there. So, so far so good. I'm happy with that. We'll put one bottle through. All right, I'm happy with that. There's 
one. There's two. And this is my recipe for everything. A little bit of Sil Glide. A little bit of wet silicone. Slap those puppies on. I'm actually pretty happy with how much fluid we were able to get evacuated out of that cooler line. It's looking really good. Some new Cortico trans mounts. Quite the difference. Not substantial, but they are a little squatted out. Now I don't want to tighten these center support bearing nuts until I get this drive shaft fully mounted in the front and the rear. nice to finally see this thing coming back together and the parts starting to disappear because this has been like a four or five day job just with laps and parts and you know five six hours to get the trans out five six hours to get the trans back in i'm gonna be real happy with this car when i'm done and she's gonna fetch a good dollar Stupid me forgot to press record, but we're all buttoned up. I got the caps on, our new Ina tensioner, belts on, good to go, looking good in the front end. I'm gonna slap this uh, fan assembly back in here. We'll keep moving. Good morning, everybody. I think today might be the home stretch. I tried to get this cooling fan installed yesterday. Probably fought this thing for 30 minutes. I was ready to punch a hole in the wall. We slept on it. I'm sure it'll go a lot easier today. So first things first, let's try to get this cooling fan back in. Oh my gosh, literally first try. Look at that folks. First try, it goes right on. 30 minutes yesterday I spent fighting it. First attempt, it just falls right on. So that just goes to show, sometimes you just gotta sleep on it, say please, take a break come back give it a try again because uh, their proof is right there this is a chop block I stole from my dad when I went down to get my toolbox Rick, if you're seeing this, I know these are your favorite chalk blocks. I'm sorry I took it, but I had to to get my toolbox home. But they're going to good use. Let's put some smoke into the intake and see if everything's nice and tight. As I was saying before, my puppy threw up kibble all over the floor. We're going to get this smoke tester connected to 12 volts right up here in the engine bay. Easy peasy. And then again on the switch, we have a heat and a heat auxiliary. The heat auxiliary is going to send 12 volt power to this little air compressor, which I love on this thing. And it has a built-in regulator too that regulates it to one PSI, so you don't have any you don't have to have any concerns about blowing out any connections, O-rings, gaskets, things like that from putting too much pressure into the system. 
All right, we're getting some smoke on our AutoLine Pro Shop Series smoke machine. I got my intake adapter set up over here. Just plug our smoke stream into the intake adapter and keep an eye, make sure we're not getting any smoke anywhere. Check this out, guys. I was wrong. We got smoke coming out of the fuel filter. So let's get this cover off and take a peek, see what's going on. Yep. So we just got smoke blowing out of that vacuum line. It had become disconnected. So I'm going to take a zip tie and I'll zip tie that puppy up because it's a fresh piece of vacuum line and that issue won't happen again. But let this be a great lesson to always smoke test these engines before you patch it up and call it good on repairs. I had done this and this is a fresh vacuum line, but it simply just popped right off and we had a big old vacuum leak. Would have caused rough running. Always flush cut your zip ties too so you don't cut somebody, next person to work on it. So yeah, when I was working in the shop, anytime I did a vacuum leak repair, I always check afterwards. Always put smoke into the system, make sure that that leak is rectified. Sadly, I lost audio for a little bit, but this is basically what happened. I got that front reinforcement plate reinstalled and got that all snug back up. Then I got that transmission fill plug removed so I could get started on the first initial fill to get some fluid back into this thing so I could fire it up. Well, it took about five bottles to get that transmission filled to the point to where it was spilling out of that drain plug port. Then after that, I just pulled the hose out, threw the drain plug back in, and just left it finger tight for when we fire up the car and then do the rest of the fill. So I hopped back in the car and got the shifter put up in the park and got the car fired up for the first time. It fired right up, it was running really good, idle conditions were all great. And so with my foot on the brake pedal, go down to the shifter and then just go from park down into reverse, hold it there for four or five seconds with your foot still on the brake, down into neutral, four or five seconds, keep it there, back down into drive, four or five seconds, and that's just gonna allow the transmission to start pushing fluid into all those different cavities and start getting that thing properly filled up. So I do this usually about two or three times running through the gears and then the next step is to let the transmission get up to temperature. I don't have a thermometer so I just usually let the car idle for about five to six minutes till the transmission pan is slightly warm to touch. You're not looking for real hot, you know 100 degrees isn't very much so as long as it's a little warm to the touch you're usually in a good spot. So the trans pan is warm to the touch so we're good to go. Get that fill plug removed and get it out of there and then just do the same exact procedure as you did for the first initial fill while the car is running and at about 100 degrees at the trans. So just pump in all the fluid that you can until you're starting to get a good steady trickle out of that fill plug again. And if you'll notice in this video, I actually ended up capping it while it was a little bit more than a trickle out of that fill plug. However, you got to keep in mind that I had the jack stands in the front of the car up maybe about one to two teeth higher than the rear so that transmission was not perfectly level and you need to factor that in when you're doing transmission fills like this you want a good flat level surface because that transmission pan is not completely symmetrical from front to rear so fluid levels will differ make sure you're in a well ventilated place too I got all the garage doors opened up for this one if you're doing it in a garage you're gonna have the car idling for quite a bit especially if the tailpipes pointed inside so make sure you got good ventilation we are good to go. In total, I used about eight and a half liters. I used a half a liter to pre-fill the torque converter, another liter to flush the trans lines, and then five liters on the first initial fill with another two liters after that while at temperature to top it all the way off. Okay, I got the wheels and tires back on. I did a rotation because it was due, so now the rear tires have six millimeter, front tires have five millimeter. Anyways, the front end is really clean. I'm gonna get under there and do one last final pressure wash. It might need a power steering hose or two in the future. The power steering pressure line looks a little weepy, but all in all, it is a very, very clean car. I've addressed all of the major issues. I just have that one little chirp that I'm gonna try to address, but other than that, I would be comfortable taking this car on a thousand mile road trip. So she's running really good. I used the new Foxwell NT624 Elite codes are cleared out of the DME on the new Foxwell so we're done with that 
Now we can focus on getting this thing back up off jack stands. So when I put this thing up, I used a floor jack and I went to my usual spot right up in here, uh, right behind the pinch seam. But when I had the pressure of the 4x4 on it, it did bow in the uh, unibody just slightly. So I'm going to bypass that technique on bringing it back down so you guys can learn from my mistakes. Lift point right here off the subframe. And it's sketchy with this 4x4. It's not fun, but it's necessary to uh, get enough height with this jack that I have. So we'll get it up, make contact on there, and we're gonna stay safely off to the side. So, you know, always keep an exit plan in mind in case you need to jump backwards. But let's lower these down to about there. Drop this down to one, two, three, four teeth showing. Bring her back down. So let's get contact on there. Monitor the wood. Just enough to get pressure off the jack stance. Let's repeat the process one more time. Bring her down. Bring her all the way down slowly. So I just chalked that front left wheel, front and rear. All right, she is back down on the ground safely. Thank goodness. It was not fun getting that car up that high. Let's go spy on Sage and see what she's doing. Oh, she's out here somewhere. Where's she at? There she is. It's a wild sage. <laughs> She's in my planter bed. Hey, what are you doing? Come. Good girl. What are you doing? Digging? Come on, let's go for a ride. We got to test drive this thing. Come on. Good girl. Take it for a long, nice test drive. And then ideally we'll find some lunch on the way back and celebrate. So, oh, and I need fuel real bad. So we're gonna go pick up fuel first. Okay. Well, she moves under her own power. So that's a good sign. Keep the gate closed while I got Sage outside so she can roam free and do puppy stuff. Tell you what, there are no clunks. This car drives really good as far as chassis goes. All right, she's shifting. She's shifting really nice. This thing is driving so good. Just wanted to take a moment and thank you guys. I, uh, I always wanted to do YouTube, you know, it's always been a dream of mine and I didn't know if I had what it takes to make a successful channel. Um, but after getting this channel started and developing the community that we've already gotten going, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you guys out there, especially everybody that's in my comment section, every video, you guys know who you are. Um, the just amount of support, positivity, and engagement that I have from you guys, it really just warms my heart. It just really reminds me that, you know, this is a possibility for me and this is an option. And if I keep going at it and give it everything I got, then we can keep this channel growing and eventually this can be a full-time job for me. I'm trying to expedite it as fast as possible because fire season is coming up and I'd way rather be making videos for you guys every day than going out and fighting fire and being away from my family all summer long. Just wanted to say thank you, really from the bottom of my heart, for all your support, all your positivity, all of your feedback. It really means the world to me, and I wouldn't be able to do this and have this channel without you guys, so thank you. Full tank for whoever wants to buy this thing. All right, let's boogie. 
I just noticed before I left too, I got a flat tire on my other E46. I see what's going on with that. All right, guys, here's the moment of truth. I'm going to let this truck get ahead of me, and I'm going to give it the juice on this on-ramp. We'll get her up to 80 and see how this torque converter does. Oh, my God. Yeah, baby. Yeah. It's shifting better than before. And there was this rotational vibration, which I believe it was from either those worn trans mounts, that incorrectly mounted guibo, or just a slightly worn center support bearing. But after pulling that drive line and renewing that stuff, there is zero rotational vibration. There's no wheel vibration. All right, what a success. You guys can see that view out there, but man, what a beautiful sight. I love where I live. RPMs are at about 2,600 to get us about 78 miles an hour, which is perfect. When that torque converter would fail and that seal would fail, it would bounce up to about 3,000 RPM at 80 miles an hour. Wow, man, this thing is driving so good. She is ready for sale. Got the title in the mail. She's all registered up, new sticker. Full tank of gas, fresh oil change, fresh trans service. Not to mention, we did that new center support bearing. It's got new transmission mounts. It's got all new fresh trans fluid, resealed trans pan. Plus we put a new filter in it. It's got a new torque converter, 85, and she is just cruising. Man, she is driving really good, guys. I've never seen such a positive and encouraging environment to where you guys just keep giving me fuel to keep making these videos. Sometimes I get tired, sometimes I get a little beaten down. Just like that little bit of squawk in the front end on that belt, like, I feel like if I can't figure it out, I'm letting you guys down. Or if I don't diagnose it correctly, I'm gonna let you guys down. But I know that's not the case. You know, some sometimes these cars really throw some troubling problems and they're real difficult and real hard to get diagnosed and get fixed, but you guys are just the best community and I couldn't thank you enough. If one of you guys wanted to buy this car, it would absolutely make my day, it would make my year and I'd be able to take the money, put it back into the channel. I'm willing to sell it on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, something like that, but nobody from my local market will understand or appreciate the amount of work and time that I've put into this car like you guys. As far as money goes, you know, I told you guys I'd, I'd like to get six grand for it. I was shooting for five before I did the torque converter. Um, I would still be happy with six grand. Seven grand, honestly, would be even better, but six grand is a realistic number. My local market, I've been seeing E46s for sale anywhere from four grand to six grand, but they're definitely not as well maintained and taken care of as this one. So I figured if I were to bump that up to six, it would leave a little bit of meat on the bone for me, but you guys would also be getting a really, really good deal for a BMW that doesn't really need anything. It would just absolutely overjoy me if I could sell this car to a subscriber or a viewer. I think that would just be the best way to end it out. We could make some content, and then after we get that done, I will do a full price breakdown on every dollar that I spent for every piece and every component on this car and I'll let you know what everything costs. Honestly, driving it right now, it's making me hesitant to sell it because it's driving so damn good. She's idling so smooth too, it doesn't even feel like the car's on. Wait for this minivan to get a little bit of lead on us and I'll uh, give her the juice on the on-ramp. Let the trans do all the shifting. See how she does. All right, you guys ready? Here we go. Eighty. Nice. She was shifting at fifty five hundred beautifully. Now we're cruising. 
no torque converter issue. You might be curious what some items that the car might still need. You could use a new seat switch. The driver's side needs a new one of these doohickeys. Uh, it's just broken, but that's an easy enough fix. The sunroof needs diagnosing. I wanted to tear into it and do a diagnosis on this. However, in order to get that sunroof cassette accessible, I had to pull, I would have to pull all the pillars, A pillar, B pillars, and C pillar covers. And if you guys know E46s, you know these pillars do not like to get taken off and put back on again. They start to peel, they start to delaminate, the clips break. It's already missing a C pillar. I didn't want to do any more damage to these pillars because the A pillars and the B pillars are actually still in really, really good shape. So it needs a sunroof diagnosis. It opens and it closes, but it doesn't close automatically. I had to bump the switch forward in order to keep walking it forward to shut. So the motor is good, but there's probably something in the linkage, something wrong in the cassette. So it'll probably need to uh, get a sunroof kit and then have the sunroof addressed if that's something you wanted to fix. It's sealed up perfectly tight and this car has zero water leaks inside to the car. So the sunroof is not an issue. Honestly, I would probably just pull the fuse because we all know sunroofs in BMWs are super problematic and I just wouldn't use the sunroof. And it needs a C pillar on the driver's side in the back. Other than that, it might need a power steering hose or two in the future and a power steering flush, and that's about it. There's really nothing else on the car drivability wise, maintenance wise, and again, that power steering repair is just preventative maintenance. There's nothing that is going to prevent you from smogging the vehicle, driving the vehicle. I would be confident to take this car on a one to 2,000 mile road trip if I needed to. It's driving beautiful. But it's official, the torque converter issue is solved and fixed. I am confident in saying that. I got so much editing to do tonight, guys. I got like 10, 12 hours of raw footage I gotta start picking through. So, guys, I am so happy with this car. And I promise you, if you wanna buy it, you will be happy with it too. I'm confident in that. That trans job was not easy by any means. It was really tough doing it on my back. But that low lift transmission jack really came in handy, even though I had to warranty it. That's what you get for buying stuff from Harbor Freight, but we got her done. Let's go get a sandwich. You know, let me know what you guys think, but I'd like to incorporate more of a vlog type feel to the channel, you know? Show you guys a little bit more about what my day to day and the personal life looks like, what we're up to at home, what we're doing at the garage and sort of go from doing you know step-by-step -step BMW repair type content to sort of all-encompassing what's going on in my life content you know what we're doing in the house what we're doing outside on a daily basis what we're thinking about with cars or what we're working on next what we're doing with the boat so I think I'm gonna try that out if you guys are seeing this video and you've watched some of my previous content before where I've started slipping in a little bit more of the blog type style let me know what you think let me know if you guys would enjoy that appreciate that or if you're like hell no stick to cars bro do bmw only i understand but whatever feedback you guys can give me greatly beneficial you know you have a different perspective than i do and i've always just tried to create content that i like to enjoy myself you know i like to be educated but i also like to be entertained I want to learn something new, but I also want to watch somebody that has a good personality, that's funny or enjoyable to watch. So let me know what you guys think. Give me some feedback on it and uh, let me know what you'd like to see in the future. Also too, the AC blows ice cold and the heater works great. So no issues with the HVAC. We got the sandwich. It's a Bubba Subba. All right, let's get home. Put this car in the barn and get cracking on this edit. I gotta get you guys a video stat. We made it. That was a very, very successful test drive, guys. 
and I am confident and happy and willing to sell the car now. So I think that is a double thumbs up today. Super awesome. Very, very happy. Look at that sleepy little puppy. Ready to go inside, Sage? Tuckered out. She's still all shaved up from when she got fixed two weeks ago. Just got a little sweetie back from the vet. She got fixed today and got rabies and chipped. But she's all done and she's all fixed up now, so we get to get her home. Come on, you little nugget. Come on. Well guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today. Like I said, I am very, very happy with the progress on this car. I am now officially ready to sell it. With the torque converter being done, it is driving perfect. And I have now checked every box on the list that I needed to check before I could sell it. I still think that six grand would be a fair number for someone to pick it up. So I'll leave that with you guys and let it marinate. Also, like I was saying in the car, you guys are absolutely awesome. You've given me a new lease on life and growing this channel and building this community is something that I've always dreamed of doing. And, you know, sometimes it's even hard for me to believe that we've grown so fast and, and being able to see what this is turning into, I'm very, very excited for the future. I just hope that you guys will give me feedback on what you'd like to see on maybe some changes that we can make to the channel to get things optimized better. You guys are always full of great information as well as BMW information too. You guys have a wealth of knowledge out there. So let's keep the community growing. Let's keep her building and we'll keep doing this thing. I ain't stopping. We're just getting started. I'm going to get inside, get this sandwich in my belly, get some much needed rest and start editing on this video. You guys need a video stat, so I got to get on it. But thanks again for watching this far. And as always, folks, I will see you on my next day off.